Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video! Today, we once again see just how badly Harmon Smith has allowed Pal World to live in his head rent-free, and if you've been watching mine or anyone else who has history with Harmon, you'll know that he has a history of allowing video games that he doesn't like and has no intention to play live in his head rent-free. Well, remember how Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 and Hi-Fi Rush have all been living in his head rent-free for the past few years now? Well, Pal World has clearly beaten them all out and who runs the empire that they've all built inside his head, me included. Anyway, you want to see some salt, and I, as your salt prophet, will deliver. Begin! Not once over the past week have I heard anyone discuss the gameplay or what Pal World actually is as a game. All I've seen is people try to gaslight you into thinking the game is completely original and, and not an infringement on, po on Pokemon's copyright. They've been bending over backwards trying to say it's better than Pokemon, it does more things than Pokemon does. And it couldn't be more obvious that the people saying this are not Pokemon fans. I've been saying this since it started. Harmon, I don't know what exactly it is that you're smoking, and I don't think I want to know anymore. But a quick Google search will show you that people are, in fact, still talking about Pal World. I mean, the game is only around about two weeks old, and it's still in early access after all, and good games don't just get forgotten about. Since you get all your gaming news from 4chan, the almighty 4chan, I'm guessing that's where you dug this horse plop up from as well. It honestly wouldn't surprise me at this point. You can also find people talking about Pal World on Steam, on Reddit, on whatever server Xbox gamers discuss Pal World on, I'm sure, YouTube, and the list goes on. You also continue to say that Pal World infringes on Pokemon's copyrights, and to that I have to ask that if Pal World truly did infringe on Pokemon's IP, then why hasn't Nintendo taken action against Pocket Pair yet? Nintendo is absolutely infamous for being extremely litigious when it comes to defending their IP for the most asinine reasons, and yet they haven't done a single thing against Pal World yet. Oh, and remember that Pokemon mod for Pal World? Nintendo went after that one and took it down mighty quickly, I noticed. So why not go after Pal World as a whole then? The answer is simple. Nintendo has literally no legal leg to stand on. Another thing you should all consider when saying that Pal World infringes Pokemon's IP is that Nintendo, the Pokemon Company, Game Freak, and Pocket Pair are all Japan-based. And over in Japan, there is literally no such thing as fair use law or fair dealing or whatever. So again, if Nintendo actually has a case against Pocket Pair and Pal World, then why haven't they taken action against them yet? They've had at least three years to do it, so for the third time, why hasn't Nintendo taken legal action against Pocket Pair and Pal World? Besides for which, Nintendo doesn't own a copyright or a trademark on cute animals. Also, with around about a thousand Pokemon now, at least, it's kinda hard to come up with something that doesn't look like a Pokemon in games like this nowadays, now isn't it? I don't know how many people are saying that Pal World is better than Pokemon, assuming that they actually exist at all, and while I doubt there are many saying that Pal World is better than Pokemon, because believe it or not, Harmon, not everyone likes Pokemon, even back when it was good, one thing we can all absolutely agree on, if we have a brain in our heads, that is, is that Pal World absolutely is better than the modern Pokemon games. Classic Pokemon games will absolutely always have a place in my heart, a very special place, but the modern Pokemon games can just go rot, and that's all I'll say on that front. Pokemon Sun and Moon were where the games that made me begin to grow cynical with Pokemon started, and Sword and Shield did quite a lot of damage to my already growing cynicism with Pokemon, but come Scarlet and Violet. That game was the straw that broke the camel's back, or horse's back in my case. Look, Harmon, I know you'll lie about it until you're blue in the face, but Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were absolutely riddled, filled to the brim with bugs and glitches. They crashed way too much, and yet you ignored every single one of those problems in a Pokemon game, shock of all shocks, 
But when it comes to an early access game that isn't made by Nintendo, it isn't on the Nintendo Switch, oh, screw that game. It's a buggy and unfinished mess. Hypocrisy, my charmin. And you all know that I have to ask Carmen if he even knows what the word gaslit means. Probably not. I mean, he did share a thing where a mobile company is making an Elden Ring game for phones or something. But Harmon thought that it was From Software making the game, or From Slop, as he calls it. Can anyone think of a really insulting f nickname that I can call Nintendo and use it in these Harmon Smith videos until Harmon learns his lesson on name calling, please? But I do think it's time that it's been a week to kind of address the elephant in the room. Uh, and that is the fact that the gameplay itself is wholly unoriginal right the gameplay is not fun the game is unfinished it's glitchy it's buggy it is objectively not a good video game i just saw from one of my uh, major detractors the guy who tags me every day justin dms uh, i just saw that he admitted he had to drop the game because it was crashing on him near constantly and i've i've seen a bunch of people like come out and say oh that's not happening and it's rig or whatever well first of all that's proof that pc gaming is fundamentally flawed if like simply having a different build can result in an entire game crashing on you to the point where it becomes unplayable but like second of all right like the issue is clear right pal world has a lot of technical problems that people are not acknowledging because they want to focus on like how it's allegedly superior to pokemon oh my god not only did Harmon smith bring me up in not just that live stream, but in this video as well. And not only that, he actually pronounced my name correctly. But yeah, Harmon, believe it or not, is telling a partial truth here. Yes, I did in fact make the community post on YouTube that he is referring to. Yes, I did say that I was going to have to drop Pal World because it was constantly crashing on me. What I absolutely did not post was what system I was playing it on, and that system was the Steam Deck, not a PC, or at least not an actual PC, but you know what I mean. Turns out, the game will crash on Steam Deck, and if I had to guess why, I would say probably due to overheating. But again, Pal World is still in early access, so I can forgive it for the crashes. Also, it was thanks to Bearbrain Kuma who mentioned it, and so I tried Pal World on my PC, and now I don't have crashes anymore, or at least not so far, thank God, for autosaves, am I right? Anyway, Pal World only crashes on the Steam Deck, at least for me. But on PC, I haven't had a single crash yet. So far, fingers crossed. Oh, and you know how he said that Pal World crashing on me is proof that PC gaming is fundamentally flawed if simply having a different rig can result in an entire game crashing on you? First of all, Harmon, Pal World is in early access, so they tell you up front that there will be bugs, that there will be glitches, and that there will be crashes, and that they are working on the game, but that it isn't quite complete yet, so just be prepared is all. Second of all, I can make that exact same argument about the Nintendo Switch with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. They were crashing at launch, and several patches later, still haven't fixed that apparently. And Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a complete game that is costing $60. It was released at $60, and they still haven't patched out its problems. Pal World's excuse is that it is in early access. So what is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's excuse? Oh, and even better than that, a patch was released, or a DLC or something, that was released for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that, as I understand it, basically rendered the game unbeatable as it crashes at the final boss. Do you now see why everyone who actually cares about Pokemon is now rooting for Pokemon to fail Harmon? Or at least for Pal World to light a fire under Game Freak's ass? Another thing, Harmon. We do talk about the bugs and glitches of Pal World. Lots of people have and still do. Get on Google and do a search on Pal World bugs and glitches, and you will find myriad discussions on Pal World's bugs and glitches and crashes. And not just there, but on YouTube as well. My own gaming channel will have Pal World playthrough footage going up, 
where there will be bugs and glitches. No one is ignoring them. I promise you that. You know, never mind that they're completely different genres. And in the genre that Power World is in, there are several better alternatives, right? Like, I, I do think that's the core issue when thinking about Power World discourse is that, like, uh, oh, this is what Pokemon should be. Well, okay, but <laughs> this isn't what Pokemon is. And second of all, like, there are alternatives to Power World, right? There are games that do what Pal World does, but better. Parmen, both Pokemon and Pal World fall into the creature tamer genre, and while they both do things and have their respective journeys evolve, and in regards to Pokemon, I use the term evolve very loosely, both of them have creature collecting and creature taming as a huge part of the gameplay, and considering that you're constantly comparing Pokemon to Pal World, it sounds like you're salty that you don't get to play it. In both Pal World and Pokemon, you collect creatures and have them aid you in some way. But for Pal World, not once do you have to capture a single pal to beat the game. But it's still there for those who want the option, especially since it makes the game easier, as I've said. Regardless, what we are hoping for is for Pal World to light a fire under Game Freak's ass so that they will evolve the Pokemon formula. And to paraphrase the act, man, isn't it ironic that Pokemon, a series about evolving, refuses to evolve. Pokemon is stale, and there is a reason everyone has started calling Pokemon Nintendo's Madden, or Nintendo's Call of Duty, or for me and Jim Sterling anyways, Nintendo's Dynasty Warriors. The Pokemon games are stale, they're boring, they're scams basically, and people are beginning to wake up to this fact. Nintendo has been selling us the exact same game with Pokemon, but with a slightly different coat of paint for the past almost three decades now. You can sit there and argue against this until you're blue in the face, but the sad fact is, Pokemon is a scam at this point, and it's long since past time we stop pretending that it's anything but. Oh, but going back to the genre thing, Pal World is an evolution of the Pokemon Legends Arceus formula, something that we were all hoping would be the Pokemon standard going forward, but nope, not even a system later. Nintendo took the Pokemon Legends Arceus formula and threw it right out the window. So now we get the Pokemon Legends Arceus formula back with Pal World, but with something fresh and unique to make it distinct. Anyways, I rambled on a bit there, so please continue, Harmon. But again, like, that's not why the game blew up the way it did. It's not why YouTubers religiously defended it. It's not why people were, were talking about it so much. No, the reason people thought they could use this game was that they thought it would be a massive L for the Pokemon company. They thought they could turn it into a PR disaster. And I'm very curious if they're going to try to maintain this momentum up until Pokemon Day next month. I find the timing of Pow World's release very interesting because, you know, it blew up. People, like, wouldn't shut up about it for, like, a day. And now it's kind of faded away. And, and now it's, like, it, it's becoming more and more obvious that the game just doesn't really have any longevity to it at all. Like, it was heavily astroturf. People downplayed the problems. Uh, like, the game wasn't good to begin with, right? No, Harmon. We are talking about Pal World. We're all talking about it and hoping and saying in hushed prayers that it will light a fire under Game Freak's ass so that they'll make good Pokemon games again. We're talking about Pal World because it's a good game. We're talking about Pal World because it's early access done right. As I said earlier, Pokemon hasn't changed nearly enough as it should have in the past three decades. And with Pal World, hopefully Game Freak will see what can happen when you actually put some damn effort into your game's development. Honestly, Game Freak either needs to change the Pokemon formula up or hire someone else to make those games, or sell off the IP. I know they won't do that, but they need to try and at least put a quarter ass into the Pokemon game's developments. Game Freak has far more than enough money to hire whoever they want to to make these games and purchase whatever tools they need, but they refuse to because sheeple like you just go out there and buy all the crap Nintendo sells like it's funnel cakes. We don't want Pal World to kill Pokemon, but rather to make Pokemon become innovative and do something different for God's sake. Game Freak has become too comfortable, far too comfortable with the position that they're in, and it's time for them to learn that the fans they have taken for granted have put them in that position that they're in, 
and that those same fans can take them back out of that same exact position as well. God forbid we expect a $60 game to have enough content to make the purchase worth it. But like, yeah, it's the same thing with Power World, right? Like uh, a plagiarized product is never, ever going to suppress the original because the original is always going to uh, innovate and always evolve and always go do new things with it. I know the the big meme right now among the community is that Pokemon does not evolve, but that is 100% not true. Pokemon evolves and innovates more than most major franchises, right? Just look at how Pokemon manages to evolve compared to Call of Duty, right? You have a clearly defined uh, expectation as to what you're going to get with each new generation, you know, a whole new cast of Pokemon, a whole new region to explore, like, you know, uh, balance changes, more things to do, new features. Like, there are reasons to play every new Pokemon game. It's not like we're sitting here playing the same games we're playing for the 90s near constantly. I had to actually cut a bit out from before because of the new rule from the last video because Harmon started talking a little bit about the FNAF movie and the Mario movie and those two things have absolutely nothing to do with Pal World. Anyways, Pal World did not plagiarize. That rumor has been completely debunked, and while I will readily admit that some of the PAL designs do look awfully close to Pokemon again for the fourth time this video, why hasn't Nintendo gone after Pocket Pair yet? Why ha didn't Nintendo hit Pocket Pair with a cease and desist order whenever the first trailer was released? Nintendo has had at least three years to go after this game, and they haven't done it yet. And remember, both game companies hail from Japan, where fair use and or fair dealing laws are literally not a thing, and copyright laws are harsher. So, there's the plagiarism bit debunked. Sorry about that. After all, Nintendo took down that Pokemon Pal World mod awfully quickly, so why not just go after Pal World as a whole then? Oh, and just so that you know, I am very well aware that Nintendo and the Pokemon Company put out a statement saying that they were investigating Pal World. But again, that came off as them saying, Yes, we know Pal World exists. Now please leave us alone. That's basically what the statement was really saying. Pocket Pair even had the proper legal parties review the game, and Pal World was given a pass. Remember, this is all done in Japan. Also, going by Harmon's logic, we can just as easily say that Pokemon ripped off from Dragon Quest because a lot of the monsters from Pokemon look similar to Dragon Quest monsters. Then again, that means we could also say that Dragon Quest ripped off Mother Nature herself. Uh, so where's Mother Nature's summons to Square Enix to meet her in a Japanese courtroom so she can get paid royalties, hmm? Now, I'll admit some pals, like Nox and Kremis, resemble Eevee a bit too closely, and Foxicle bears quite a striking resemblance to Alola Ninetales, but they're different enough to the point that Nintendo can't sue over them. Again, if Nintendo could have, they would have launched a legal claim against Pocket Pair by now. Right, Pokemon has remained very, very relevant for almost 30 years, for this exact reason, is that it does innovate. It does bring in new fans constantly. It does do a lot to keep a lot of older fans happy. And like, I am very, very tired of this mindset among shills, right? Among like uh, the YouTube community that they don't, right? It's so obviously fake to me that the people who criticize Pokemon don't know the first thing about it, that it's honestly kind of laughable. And the way they'll try to always uh, the trick they'll always pull is that they'll they'll try to tell you that like oh I was a huge Pokemon fan back in the Game Boy days but I lost interest because the games didn't change they didn't become action based they didn't they didn't grow up with me like it's a trick right Th this is what I mean when I call people pretendos right because if you say you just don't like Pokemon and that you never will and that like uh, nothing there's nothing that anyone could possibly do to get you to play the games like nobody would pay attention to you right. All anybody would do would just be like, yeah, whatever, you're not a fan, whatever. But by, by by pretending to be a hardcore fan, by doing this thing where you act as if, oh, man, I used to love Pokemon back in the day. It's such a travesty to see what it turned out uh, into, right? By doing it that way, people take you a little bit more seriously. Sorry for letting that clip run on a little longer than it should have, folks, but I needed to so that you have the proper context. Anyways, Harmon, apart from fun... What are the reasons to play any video game, let alone Pokemon? Most JRPGs I know tend to focus on storytelling in some way, and Pokemon can't even do that before since Black 2 and White 2, well, before Black 1 and White 1 and 
after Black 2 and White 2, sorry. Also, those people who criticize Pokemon do in fact know the first thing about it, and we have in fact been playing since Red and Blue, or in my particular case, since Pokemon Yellow. I have since played every mainline Pokemon game up to Scarlet and Violet, with the sole exception of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So yeah, those people like me who are criticizing Pokemon actually know a lot more about the games than you do. We're just asking Game Freak to change up the Pokemon formula, as if that's some sort of a crime against nature the way you bitch about it. Also, I find it extremely infuriating how Harmon acts like he knows us from Adam when he doesn't know the first thing about us or our personal lives. How would he know what games we played? I have Pokemon playthroughs over on my gaming channel, Harmon, if you would like to check them out. So please stop telling me I haven't played those games when I actually have. And the same goes for all those other people you call pretendos. I also hate how he's using the no true Scotsman fallacy whenever it comes to criticizing Nintendo games. But he's more than happy to do those same exact, like, to criticize non-Nintendo games. And he doesn't even criticize them. He plays them for like two, three minutes, puts them down, says, oh, they're bad, they're boring. Harmon, when people criticize something, nine times out of ten, they're doing it because they want the thing they're criticizing to be the absolute best that it can be, you idiot. We are doing the criticism of Pokemon out of love, not malice. Criticism seems to be something you never learned about, Harmon. But then, most people never learn the lesson of taking criticism nowadays, it seems. The only hardcore fans I see left for Pokemon are you and your fellow circle jerkers, Harmon. Also, please learn how to focus your camera because it's just going wild, man, and it's really distracting me. You know, Power World, I think, very well may be the beginning of the end of their credibility because these people swore up and down that that Power World was better than Pokemon, that it was completely original, that it was just uh, way more successful than any Pokemon game. It's not like they... They did everything they possibly could to try and prop this thing up, specifically to try and ruin Pokemon, ruin its like reputation among the gaming community, and yet it's it's not working. Getting on YouTube and reading articles on Google proves that people are liking Pal World far more than Pokemon, dude, or at least the modern Pokemon games. Also, what are these techniques we're supposedly using to prop up Pal World? Also, while Pal World may take inspiration from numerous other games, who says it needs to come up with new ideas to be good? Sometimes the best games take older games' ideas and mesh them up together. Sometimes that's for the best. And as for it being more successful than any other Pokemon game, it apparently outsold the Unova Pokemon games, I think. That's what I've heard. But take that one with a grain of salt, because I'm recording in a place without internet for this video. Anyways, if they did, it's a shame, because Pokemon Black 2 and White 2? were easily the best Pokemon games have ever been, at least the mainline games. The reason the game sells so well, Harmon, is because it's half the price of all the Switch Pokemon games and it actually functions just fine too. And Pal World is still only an early access. Let that sink in, Harmon. Right. Uh, like, it's crazy, like, over the past couple of days, just how the conversation has shifted. You know, I'm seeing more and more people talk about Pokemon. I'm seeing more and more people acknowledge how good Scarlet and Violet actually is. Legends Arceus, I think, has finally gotten the mainstream recognition it deserves. You know, the game of the year 2022 was just heavily shafted when it first came out. You know, it was sandwiched between a highly anticipated remake and the new generation. Like, a lot of people felt like it was bad timing, and I kind of agree with that. Like, I don't know, maybe, like, maybe they could have released Legends Arceus this year, right? Like, maybe, I don't know, maybe they wanted to release it alongside the remakes, but... Ah, uh, nice to see that Harmon still doesn't know how to pronounce Arceus' name properly, even though he does end up pronouncing it properly, like, twice later on in the video. Also, who exactly is calling Pokemon Scarlet and Violet good? No one I know, that's for damn sure. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were so hyped up because it was going to be the first time the mainline Pokemon games went open world, and we all thought we were going to get more of the Pokemon Legends Arceus formula, but nope. It's the same thing as all of the past mainline Pokemon games, but now in an open world! Another open world game, like we haven't seen millions of those before in recent years. 
And I do know how ironic that is, considering that PAL World is also open world, but in PAL World, you can alter the game settings to your liking, unlike Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which expects the player to play by its rules. Furthermore, Harmon, everyone I know was praising Pokemon Legends Arceus when it came out. Even Jim Sterling was praising Pokemon Legends Arceus, and that guy hates what Pokemon has become just as much as most other people do. The problem is, Harmon, is that we all thought that the Pokemon Legends Arceus formula was going to be the new standard for mainline Pokemon games, but Game Freak threw that formula out the window by the very next game. Harmon must have schizophrenia because unless he's a troll, there is no way he is genuine. But he is genuine, so schizophrenia it is. Also, if Pokemon Legends Arceus had been released this year, Pal World would most likely have stomped all over it. Regardless, Pokemon Legends Arceus would be a great starting point for all the mainline Pokemon games going forward, but because of sheeple like you, who buys everything Nintendo puts out and praises it and defends it to high heaven like it's God's greatest gift to Earth, Game Freak has become too comfortable with where they're at, and that needs to change. Apologies for repeating myself, folks, but Harmon repeats himself, so I end up repeating myself. Thankfully, we're almost through with this train wreck of a video. We have, like, I think three more minutes of Harmon's video, which will actually be like 30 seconds for this video. Thank God, most of it's just fluff and talking about Pokemon and all that bollocks. Oh, but before I do let Harmon continue, though, both of the Pokemon games that sandwich Pokemon Legends Arceus that Harmon's talking about here, they were all bad. We got a bad new game, and we also got a bad remake. Just thought I'd let everyone know. You know, whatever their, like, mindset was with the, the release timing, there's no denying that, like, Legends Arceus was amazing, right? That it was a top-tier Pokemon game. That, by itself, is better than anything Pal World will ever accomplish, right? The entire argument that Pokemon doesn't innovate or change or evolve completely goes out, of, out the window when you acknowledge that, like, Legends Arceus exists. And I know that a lot of people are, like, trying to damage control it, but... In the end, it just ended up, like, collapsing among itself, right? And I do think this is going to be the problem that Power World is going to have, you know, come Pokemon Day and beyond, right? Like, they're going to have to compete with every single Pokemon product that comes out. Mobile games, the, the mainline games, you know, remakes, uh, the anime, movies, you know, merchandise, the card game. You know, like, they're going to be competing with all of that. And people really think that selling, like, 8 million copies on Steam, allegedly, is going to put a dent in what Pokemon manages. Again, sorry for letting the clip run on for as long as I did, folks, but context needed. As much as I hate to admit it, Harmon is right. 8 million copies alone isn't going to put a dent in Nintendo's bank account, or rather Game Freak's bank account. But it has now sold over 19 million copies. 12 million on Steam and 7 million on Xbox last time I checked, and that number is almost certain to grow. Having said that, 8 million copies alone is pretty impressive for an early access indie game, if I do say so myself, and it reached 19 million sales in under two weeks. Also, it was the most played game on Steam for a little while before dropping down to second place, but still, man, that's impressive. Also, Harmon, Pal World is already doing better than the Pokemon mainline games, at least the modern ones starting on the Switch, and if Game Freak does indeed continue down the lazy path they've chosen, then Pocket Pair and Pal World have nothing to fear, nor do they have anything to fear from the spin-off games either. I won't talk about most of the other stuff like the anime, but someone needs to tell Harmon that Pal World already has a TCG coming out if the head honcho of Pocket Pair's Twitter account is anything to go by anyway. Oh, and by the way, what exactly did Pokemon Legends Arceus do better than Pal World, Harmon? Could you build bases in Pokemon Legends Arceus? No, you couldn't. Could you capture humans as well as Pokemon and force them to do labor and sleep outside on straw mats while you went inside a building and slept on a proper bed? Again, no, you couldn't. Tell me exactly what Pokemon Legends Arceus did better than Pal World, Harmon.
because I genuinely don't see it. Oh, great one. Anyways, I think that'll be it for today, guys. I've been working on this video, trying to anyways, trying to get it done so I could upload it, mostly because Harmon mentioned my name in it. And now, I think I'm just going to cut the rest here, because from what I listen to, he just goes on another ramble rant about Pokemon, and how it's better than Pal World, but still providing zero examples and, ev and no evidence, and claims that they're, that are made without evidence, they can be dismissed without evidence. Which, if you've watched me long enough, you should know that phrase by now. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye for now!